So I heartily welcome you all in today's webinar. And uh, we will discuss in this webinar most common challenges aspirants must cop while writing OET letters. I am Dr. Maryam Zulfikar, OET mentor at MedExam Expert. And uh, let's start our today's webinar. So while proceeding, I think that you must all know that these are the challenges which I think that uh, students have to face while writing their OET letters. So the first thing is lack of understanding of letter writing. Okay, so what is the main thing is, I think that a lot of aspirants uh, don't know how to write a letter. What are contents of a good letter? and how to write it into a paragraphs. They use the note form as given in the case notes and sometimes copy paste the information given which results in their failure. So this is the most important thing. Whenever you are going to appear in the OET exam and you are not knowing the proper ABC of this exam, then how can you write a good letter, okay? So the thing is, if you are not uh, familiar to the uh, basics of OET letter writing and uh, if you are not known to the contents of a good letter and how to make it in a paragraph paragraph form then it is useless to appear in the exam like there is 90 to 95 percent chances that you will fail this subtest okay so these are the most important and basic things to understand there is a clear instruction at the end of each letter that do not use the note form. It means that you have to write your letter in paragraphs, okay? But students don't follow, follow this advice and they think that they have to just copy paste the things from uh, the information given in the case notes and they used to do the same in their letter. And this is the, uh, this, this results in their failure. So, <clears throat> First thing is that after that, lack of knowledge to implement. They don't know how to use their knowledge. First of all, students think that it is just like a call from one department to another department because in most of the time we see that OET letters are uh, the referral letters. So I have heard many of the students who say that, uh, ma'am, it's just a call like a transfer call from one department to another department. No, it is not like that. Aspirants don't know how to use good words, sentence formation, organization and layout, genre and style, language, grammar and tenses. So these are other things on which you are marked upon your OET letter writing. These all the things are the factors on which you are being graded. And if any of, any of these is not present in your uh, letter, then there are chances that your score may go up and down according to the situation. So these are the basic factors upon any of this, upon which any of the student will be uh, marked. So there is another important thing. I think that there is, this is an, uh, another challenge, which is unable to do time management. Time management is an other problem while writing a letter. Students waste a lot of time on thinking what should be written in the letter and time goes, goes off. So this is the very uh, observable thing. And I have uh, seen many of the letters in which the start of the letter is very good. Like they uh, put a lot of efforts in the uh, starting of the letter and their letter looks very beautiful. But after the start, when I'm uh, proceeding uh, with the rest of the letter, then after second or third paragraph, uh, letter is just like satisfactory, like, but not satisfactory. So this is the thing. Uh, if they're able to write a good start, then due to lack of time, they don't perform well in the end. And the letter is about 3.30 and 3.40. And examiner is also confused, like how to grade that letter. So these are some basic challenges, in my opinion, that students face these while writing OET letter. And I'm really sure, I'm pretty sure that once you understand all the things like basic understanding and uh, your knowledge to implement in the OET letter writing and uh, you know how to manage your time, 
then it is the most easiest subset of subtest of oed exam believe me it is the most easiest subtest if you know each and everything and if you have proper understanding of oed letter writing and how can we do that how can we do that it it, it is a game of practice and uh, the more you practice the more you will learn it is also true that this is a game of practice but the thing is before practice you must be knowing each prerequisite and each essential of the oet letter writing if you don't know anything about it and you are only going to uh, go for a practice of writing let uh, writing letters then it is totally a waste one more thing is that if you are going to write a letter and you are going uh, to assess it by yourself or by one of your friend who has recently cleared the exam it is totally off waste i'm telling you because your friend uh, i don't know who, uh, like whether he or she has prepared from a credible source or not but the uh, he's not your mentor he's not your examiner he can assess your letter he can tell you that okay you have uh, you have uh, uh, written a letter in the proper format okay the paragraphs are okay but the thing is he cannot he or she cannot point out your each and every minor mistake okay so it is a big mistake uh, students think that because i used to see a lot of uh, social media pages as well and i used to see there that uh, literally people have shared their letters there for the assessment and they think that if uh, they are going to do this and someone um, from any of the member and any person any random person is going to comment on their post that it is b grade or c grade letter and they are going to believe this thing so it's very alarming i don't know why do people uh, do these things so it's better to have your preparation from a credible source always okay so these are the case notes which i shared uh, yesterday for the letter assessment and uh, uh, these notes were saying like mr george reen a 54 year old is a patient in the medical ward in which you work okay and in the end you can see that patient discharge to home uh, family assistance so i think that it is a discharge patient and we are going to discharge the patient so we are going to write the letter to his gp or doctor or whatever else so uh, the thing is uh, they haven't mentioned like you are a doctor or a nurse so that's why i cho uh, choose that case notes so that uh, both of the doctor and nurses can write on this anyhow we will um, assess the letters at the end of the webinar what's the problem sorry so uh before assessment part you all must be knowing that <clears throat> what is the overview of oet letter writing so time allocation for the writing is 45 minutes and 5 minutes for understanding and 40 minutes for writing letter so this is the very start when you are given with the um, question booklet and you are uh, following the instructions because because you are not allowed to write a single word on your sheet and if you do so then it will result in cancellation of your exam so be careful about it and uh, because the team is watching you and you are under invigilation so don't do this uh, first 5 minutes are just for reading and what you have to do in that 5 minutes just focus on the task given which is your writing task okay and you will be having 40 minutes for the letter writing and what you have to do is your letter must be starting from address and salutations you have to write the address date patient details whatever the thing is in this way uh, you will be done with the first part of your letter i'm going to tell you that your letter is consisting of two or three parts like address and salutations then there is a purpose then there is a body of a letter but students think that 
they think that okay we will write a date then we will write patient details uh, then we can easily write okay mr john admitted in our hospital now he is ready for discharge he was suffering from pulmonary embolism and this and that he's a, a social drinker and he drinks alcohol he has two daughters he is divorced like i have seen many letters uh and i have seen the starting like this so it is very surprising i don't know why student do this so th this is all the uh, these all scenarios comes when you are not enough prepared and you are not well prepared because a lot of students do what when they don't take any uh, course and any of the guidance from the credible source and uh, they only uh, go to appear for uh, taking uh, like mocks and uh, uh, practice test then these things happen because they have not uh, taken guidance from the credible source so they are not known to the uh, pet format of the oet letter writing so these things are very common now comes to the body of the letter and i have told you that it should contain purpose and uh, it should be written most appropriately if your purpose is written uh, accurate then you surely score b grade if there is no other grammatical mistake and format is also correct and after purpose uh, organization of case notes in paragraph and approximately there should be four or five paragraphs and at the end there must be greeting this is very important thing which i am going to tell you now that format of letter which is very important and it varies from letter to letter as there are four kind of letter in oed writing all four letter show somewhat different format of organization of paragraphs it is essential to understand the proper format word count command should be followed strictly as you may lose your marks if word count is not within the range given it is also very important thing because at the end of the letter we see that we are given with the instruction that you have to write your uh, letter with a word count range of 180 to 200 words okay and if you don't follow the instructions properly then it will results in your failure so these two things which i have mentioned about format and the word count these are very 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 important and the about the format of the letter it is pretty important because all the four kind of letters are not following the same format and uh, this thing can only be told by the students who are taking course uh, of med exam who they can tell you that they have learnt that how the four kind of letters are different from each other so this thing can be clear if you take our course now there are some journal tips regarding oet writing and uh, these tips are practice at least 30 letters before your exam okay if you can't write 30 letters then you should write at least at least 25 letters before the real exam and you have not only to write the letters you have to assess them okay uh, write the letter with the stopwatch on yeah this is a very important thing because you will be given 40 minutes in the exam and uh, uh, you must be knowing that after that 40 minutes you are not allowed to write a single word so always try to write uh, uh, with the timer and the stopwatch on after writing each letter get it uh, checked from a credible source academy med exam expert of course uh, and get feedback of your letters and rectify your mistakes this is very very important point because uh, whenever you are going uh, for the assessment of the letter and uh, you get a feedback from the mentor then you have to check your mistakes that what are the things which mentor have pointed out and mentor have highlighted these things and what you have to do is then you have to rectify your mistakes whenever i used to see a letter uh, which is around c plus c or even d then i used to say that aspirant that please rewrite this letter because the thing is if they rewrite this letter this they will improve the mistakes they have done in the previous letter they will uh, see the mistakes they have done so this is the best way uh, for preparation of your oet letter writing learn from your mistakes and then improve 
if you feel like that you are struggling regarding OET writing, please do not hesitate to ask for help, okay? Get your letters checked and get feedback. It's better to seek help than appearing in OET again. It is an other important dilemma. I can say that because uh, you are investing very huge amount uh, on your exam. And if you are going uh, to appear in exam without preparation, so it is very regrettable situation because um, what is the purpose of invest investing that huge, huge amount? So the thing is, uh, I think if you are invest investing that much amount, you should uh, also invest a little of that amount on your preparation too. So the thing is, if you don't do this, then there are chances that you can appear in OED again. Do not write rough only focus on your original letter. Even when you are uh, writing at home and even when you are um, uh, trying it for yourself, always try to write it very neat and uh, uh, the letter should be complete one. Writing is after listening and reading and uh, I told you that it is a third subtest. You are super exhausted and you have 40 minutes to write the letter. Consider this subtest the most challenging, but I told you, once you are knowing the each and every uh, prerequisite of OED letter writing, then it is the most easiest subtest, okay? When you know the format of the letter, it is easy to solve any kind of letter writing task. Letter assessment is done upon many aspects and I've told you about these aspects like accuracy, coherence, word count, English grammar, neatness, so you have to be very particular about all these. Every letter has its own trick to compile case notes and it is easy to pick them out. If you may know all of the essential of letter writing, then it must be the most doable part of you or, of you, for you and it can uh, only be done with the help of proper guidance and course. So the thing is, uh, as uh, uh, on behalf of uh, our course, which we are running, I can tell you there are four live sessions of each module. So in four sessions, after taking that all four sessions, you are competent enough to write a complete and a good letter. And not about writing, it is about listening, reading and speaking as well. So as I'm writing mentor of OET, so I'm telling you that after taking all the four lessons, you will be uh, competent enough to write any kind of letter regarding discharge, transfer, referral, and urgent referral. So it would be very easy for you to pick uh, the kind of letter and to choose the case notes which you have to fit in that situation. Like what are, what are the instructions to whom you are going to write? So these are the basic things which can be easily picked when a person is well prepared, okay? So now uh, comes to the assessment of the letters uh, because uh, yesterday we have announced that uh, the first two participants who will submit their letter first on the case notes I shared yesterday uh, will be assessed in the live webinar. So I think so. I'm going to share my screen again because I have to open that group. So let me end it here. Okay. So let me share the screen again. I think it is on our public group. Let me check. Yes, here is it. There is a query in the comment box. Someone is asking about public group name. So here is uh, our public group OET with Mad Exam. Okay, so uh, you can have the link. Backend team, Ramesh, Fazan, I don't know who is there. Anyone of you is present, kindly share the link of our group so that they can join. I think this is the first letter I received after sharing the case notes. And uh, it is by Dr. Hina. Uh, Dr. Hina, you are present in our webinar. 
I think she is not present. Is it so? And Dr. Sana, Miss Sana, are you present? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, so uh, Miss Sana is present with us and she has written the second letter, which I, I was uh, telling you about, like uh, the case notes I shared yesterday and she has written a letter and submitted us first. So let me assess Hi, Dr. Her Mani, sorry to interrupt. Uh, please check the chat box. Dr. Hena is also present. Okay, okay. I will I will assess her letter after that. Okay, so uh, um, all of you, uh, please be careful while I am reading reading her letter, and I will tell you the mistakes she has done if there is any. So let me read her letter. So she has written, Miss Lorita Pascal, physiotherapist, Temple Stowe District Medical Clinic, forty three Anderson Street, Temple Stowe. And then after that, she has left a blank line and date is 12 January 2016. Then after that, there is an other blank line and she has introduced the patient, which is uh, Mr. George Chen and uh, age is 54 years. Then she has written, Dear Miss Loretta Pascual, I'm writing to refer Mr. Chin who is recovering from recent total right knee surgery due to chronic pain. Your further care and management would be highly appreciated. So, Ms. Sana has written a wonderful address and salutations and her purpose is also very well. After that, she has written, Mr. Chin was suffering from osteoarthritis. He developed swelling related to fluid buildup in the right knee and pain. This is the cause of difficulty in walking and that's why he underwent total knee surgery. He developed anemia post-operatively. He is facing limitations to his mobility and in doing his daily activities due to pain in his lower extremities, especially in his right knee. He was able to walk only 100 meters with the help of front wheel walker. So you all can see that how beautifully she has written a letter. Her sentences are very short and very clear to the examiner. These are not very long. These are not having any of the irrelevant information. And uh, her uh, length of the letter is very accurate. All the details, like necessary details and the relevant information is present in the letter. I'm very happy to read that letter. And the next paragraph is the saying Mr. Chin was uh, showing eagerness to go home. That's why he's being discharged. He's going home with the help of his family. <clears throat> okay, this line is not good here, but still it is acceptable. It is noticeable that Mr. Chin is still walking with his uh, front wheel walker. I would be highly appreciative if you could provide specialized assistance as a physiotherapist. So you are requested to pay attention to his acute and comprehensive rehabilitation for his complete recovery. In case of any queries, feel free to contact me. You are sincerely nurse. As she is a nurse, <clears throat> so she has written nurse because I told you that these case notes were very journal and both the doctors and nurses can write on this. So, Ms. Sana, this letter is very good. Like, uh, you are a very good student of mine. I know you because she's our core student and she has written a very, very beautiful letter. So I'm proud of you, Ms. Sana. And uh, if I want to grade you and I, if I want to score you upon this, then your grade is B grade and your score is 380. Okay. So okay. the thing is... Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, you all can take a screenshot of it as well because you can see that how beautifully she has uh, formed the sentences, how beautifully she has uh, made that case notes into paragraphing. Like there are two to three paragraphs and uh, the word count is very appropriate. Address and salutations is present. Purpose is very beautiful. Greeting is present. Then how can you be failed in this subtest after writing that kind of letter? So this is the complete letter in my opinion. And uh, these are the things you cannot, even if you can take a screenshot, you can make a notes, you can copy this letter. If there are any other kind of case notes and you have to write on that, if you are not prepared and you have not taken any of the guidance regarding OET letter writing, then you can't write a letter like this. So 
the purpose of assessment was this like i want to tell you that if you are not having proper guidance then you can not write a letter like this which miss sana has written okay so after that sorry ramesh told me that miss hina is also present with us so dr hina are you present uh, yes ma'am okay so let me read her letter i uh, yes i can hear you now i'm reading your letter for the assessment so uh, she has uh, written miss lorita pascual a physiotherapist um a temple store district medical clinic 43 anderson street temple store and uh, then she has written date okay and after that there is a patient uh, details dear miss pascal i'm writing to refer mr jean who was admitted in our clinic with the sign and symptom suggestive of osteoarthritis after the total uh, knee surgery your further assessment and management regarding acute comprehensive rehabilitation would be greatly appreciated okay your purpose is also good but you can concise it a very well because you have uh, uh, conveyed the detail very well uh, like uh, the things uh, which we are needing in purpose are there but still it is a uh, comprising of around 5 to 6 lines so in that way uh, it seems that yes, your purpose yes. is a bit long okay so uh, then you have written initially okay. on 10 1 mr chin presented with the complaint of severe progressive right knee pain accompanied by severe difficulty with inability on examination moderate swelling of right knee joint was noted consequently ice packs were applied at that time okay uh, during hospitalization nursing management provided to mr chin was a uh, supervised level from bed mobility eating grooming and bathing uh, she was also provided minimal assistance level for lower body dressing she can ambulate less than 100 meters uh, with uh, okay please never ever use uh, these symbols and signs in oet letter writing because examiners don't like these okay uh, with front wheel walker however there is limited range of motion of the right knee today mr chin is medic medically stable and is uh, he is ready to discharge to home with family assistance she was advised for regular diet and comprehensive rehabilitation please note mr chin drinks alcohol moderately and he enjoys watching <clears throat> saucer and walking uh, dogs in the light of the above i would be grateful if you could see her in your earliest convenience and after that there is no greetings so uh, this letter is also good but i think that uh, it is having a lot of unnecessary information as well but still it is b grade letter and it is 350 okay so uh, dr hina your letter is also good but i have told you uh, you can concise it with a more accurate information okay so these were the things which i told you okay so she is saying okay and there are some uh queries in the comment box which is tell us about difference of miss mrs mr okay so uh, let me share the screen again and we were on our slides okay so i have assessed two letters in front of you and what do you guys think that what are your opinion regarding the letters what do you think that that i have read that letters correctly or do you think that uh, no um, these letters are not uh, categorized under b grade what do you think that any one of you can uh, give his or her opinion regarding the assessment hello miss mariam i want to give some uh, opinion uh, yes please uh, the first one letter is uh, very good uh, you have also graded b grade which is quite well and mm -hmm. this is 
second letter i i think it is uh, you have already said that uh, it is written uh, she has given unnecessary information mm -hmm. uh, she she must ha uh, have to some yes please say i think his connection has lost i don't know what he was trying to say so <clears throat> any other candidate who wants to give his or her opinion regarding the assessment part hello hello uh, ma'am are you hearing me yes i can hear you and uh, the letter was so good but uh, what is the um, space between the uh, address and date there are we leave one uh, line or two uh, we have to leave one line before and after date so the letter one uh, which i showed you the first uh, it was the correct uh, letter format to write so try to follow it okay, okay. so um, and yeah, after yeah. sanitation we write uh, let support we write dear head uh, nurse or physiotherapist yeah mm -hmm. so after that um, we leave one line or two then you have to leave one line one line okay yes. but she i think she don't leave uh, the line yes she hasn't leave the line i i uh, also noticed the thing but that letter was typed one so i think that um it can be a typing mistake as well so the correct format is necessary thing the number of lines you leave or you don't leave is it is not that much important but the correct format organization layout language and word count grammar these are the things on which you will be assessed upon in the real exam okay so okay, leaving one line blank and uh, the leaving two line blank these are these are the things which make your letter beautiful and neat okay are you getting me yes ma'am <clears throat> okay ma'am okay. thank you you are welcome so uh, for those students who are asking about the course which we are running and uh, we are running the may course so we have done with two live sessions and our next session is on which is our writing session 3 which is on monday because our uh, sessions for writing usually conducted on monday so uh, we have done with first two sessions and the other live session is on 29th of may uh, monday and uh, i will be giving um, giving a briefing on transfer and discharge letters because in the previous two letters i have done with the format and understanding of urgent referral and simple referrals so this is our schedule and you can see here that all the four uh, sessions are displayed here on the screen and you can see the timings you can see the topics you can see the dates and you can also see the mentors as well so if you are needing any kind of information regarding our course so you can contact our coordination team and the coordination team kindly share your number in the comment box now come to the most amazing part of the live webinar which is our question answer session and let's let's start uh, questioning me what what are the things you think that oet letter writing is uh, giving you very difficult time so regarding this webinar and regarding the assessment part regarding oet letter writing what are the common questions which are coming in your mind right now please ask ask away Hi, ma'am. Ma Can you hear me? Like uh, please ask one by one. Uh, I will ask one all by the one. Questions. I will answer. Yes, please ask. May I, ma'am? Yes, please. Ma'am, I I have no query. Basically, just I want to add some lines. Okay. Um, everyone present here at this time i highly recommend med exam expert because i have a lot of confusion in my mind when i initially started my letter writing practice but after starting uh, my regular course with med exam expert i'm quite confident and now i can write any th type of letter very well as you already uh, all guys see my letter already 
so um thank you so much mad exam expert thank you so much uh, dr mariam and uh, all the team that's it you are welcome miss sana uh, and i have seen uh, your letter and everyone has seen your letter and it is not just a single letter miss sana uh, has written because she is our core student i mentioned it earlier so her letter writing is very good and i am pretty sure that in real exam she will surely is this module because there are some students uh, for which mentor is a feeling like he or she is going to pass the exam or not and for me uh, for my students uh, i think that i i am having a proper insights for this reason like uh, this student is going to pass the exam and this is going uh, this is this one is not going to pass the exam so your mentors knows very well so any other question hello ma'am ma'am i have one question yes please ask uh, ma'am just now one student asked you that uh, this asked about a space blank space we have to leave yes, yes. ma'am i just missed that part can you repeat that where we have to leave blank space okay uh, in the very start of the letter when uh, you have to write address and salutations then uh, yes. you have to write uh, then you have to leave one blank line before and after the date okay, okay. yes ma'am that that i already know so ma'am after uh, writing your sincerely do we have to leave one blank space more no no there is no need to uh, leave one blank space after writing your sincerely or yours faithfully okay and your sincerely and in the next line we will write doctor that's it yes that's it okay no ma'am okay one more question one more question yes, ma'am yes please yes please ask ma'am when we will start writing the body of letter like, like when we will start writing the purpose of letter do we have to leave blank space between dear dr flandry something and comma and after uh, leave one blank space we will start the purpose of letter is it so uh sorry please repeat i can't get your question ma'am uh, when we uh, when we will uh, uh, write dear dr flandry or dear dr something comma then we will uh, start writing the purpose of letter right so do we have to leave blank space in between these two yes then you have to uh, leave one blank line before starting the purpose of the letter okay okay, okay. thank you so much no ma'am you're welcome yes, yes Hello, please i am nigger i shared my letter in the group please assess my letter and uh, point out my mistakes please okay miss nigger uh, we have mm. announced that we will assess only first two letters for the participants who will uh, provide their letters at the first so i'm so sorry uh, if you really want to get assessed for your letter you can write uh, your letter in the free group and our letter writing day is on friday Uh, so on the next friday uh, you can get your letter assessed still if you want to take our course and any of the other facilities like med exam is providing in the uh, mock exam so you can take that okay 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 ma'am thanks but i am no, no new joiner today i i have joined today in this group okay so very welcome uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then you can see that on okay, every time i have one question yes please ask Uh, can we? Uh, I read some mentor notes, and he said that you can leave two lines after writing yours sincerely. Then you can write doctor. Is it good or not? Should okay, let me tell you. Like yeah, these are the things that are not the most important one while the assessment part. It these are the things. These uh just give your letter a neat and complete look. Okay, so uh, these mm -hmm. things. you should not make worry about the proper things and the exact things for which you should worry about are the i have told you earlier that organization layout and language so these are the things on which you will be assessed okay by leaving one blank line or two lines these are not the concerning things for the oet letter writing okay but the correct format is like no i, I want to uh, mm -hmm. yes please hello Hello, I, I can hear you. I want to ask that uh, we have uh, the, uh, should these uh, 
uh, things also have marks here. Yeah. We have write the first doctor name, then I have to write a uh, leave after one line. Yes, we exactly. Have exactly. These these things these things will all will also count in. Yes, address and salutations have proper marks for it. Yes, you have to follow the proper mm -hmm. format for this. And one thing I also want to ask: if we we write, uh, we put a comma after salutation, uh, we should have to put comma after your sincerely. Is it true or not? Ah uh, yes, it is true. You have to put comma both after dear doctor and your sincerely. And if we don't put, we have don't put. We we no we don't need to put on. No, you comma, have to yes? put. No, no, no. In any case, you have to put comma. Okay. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Ma'am, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes, please yeah. ask. Uh, I have a question about uh, sincerely and faithfully. Where we can uh, write sincerely and faithfully? Okay, that's a very good question, uh, which Doctor Heather has asked, and. Um, if you are knowing the name of the person to whom you are writing, then you have to write yours sincerely. Like if you are going to write Dr. James Banerjee, consultant cardiologist, this and that, all the information. But when you are not knowing the name of the person to whom you are writing, like when you are giving, given the instructions, like write a letter of referral to emergency registrar or the admitting officer or the occupational therapist. In that scenarios, you are not knowing the name of the person then you have to write yours faithfully. Okay? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have one more question about uh, first paragraph. We can uh, write the prison complaint of patient. Uh, for in the very first paragraph you're talking about? Mm, and uh, we write, when we start the letter in uh, first paragraph, can we uh, write the patient? to complain like uh, current problems. <laughs> okay, so for the very first paragraph, if you are talking like uh, right after the address and salutations, then uh, you are not correct here because we have to write the purpose first. And in purpose... Yes. Okay. And in purpose, we are not allowed to uh, mention these things. And in the body of the letter, yes, you can always mention that. Okay, okay. Uh, we should have to write uh, only purpose in first paragraph. Exactly. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, any other question? Dr. Mario, I also want to ask, uh, we, we, uh, when we write the social, uh, in reference, simple reference letter, the social history of the uh, of patient, uh, should we have to write is it he's single married and then we ha should we have to write his her mother exactly. and uh, her mother exactly and you have to history? write you 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 have to write these kind of histories but let me tell you all these kind of histories like social history past history family history these all histories should be at the end of the letters before greeting okay because these histories are not that important one to be mentioned at the very top so all these kind of histories should be present no, at the end no it, it, no, I want to ask if we have simple reference, we have to write our right after the introduction. Then if we have urgent urgent letter, then we have to write at the end. Is it in true? Both, in both referrals, in both referrals, you have to mention social and past history. In the end or in the right after uh -huh. introduction? In the end. Okay. So ma'am, so ma'am, what if we leave the social history something not, not relevant? So can we leave it? Yes, you can leave it. Uh, but the thing is, the uh, um, answer here is very ambiguous because uh, you have to check for that, like what is the history and to whom you are writing. So that was I. That was why I was telling you that if you take course and you are, are a part of our course, then you must be having proper understanding because this is also the thing, like question you have asked, this is also discussed in our course and the course student can answer you it very well that where we can omit the social history so discharge letters are the one in which we can somehow omit the social history because some of the times you are writing to the let uh, uh, we are writing letter to the patients on doctor and his or her gp 
so this is the answer only discharge letter okay. uh, can give you a margin to omit this kind of history okay so any other question okay in the comment box there are some queries discussed can we write age in a separate line no we cannot write age in a separate line we have to write age right after the name of the patient and alcohol point need to be mentioned yes um, if it is necessary ma'am can you kindly assess my letter uh, i have told you that on every friday in our free group i assess letter and uh, still if you want complete assessment of the letter for each and every part then you can join uh, our course and our other mock exam so how to identify proper relevant case notes also in what sequence should we uh, clear a uh, dear recipient and regarding patient so uh, these are the things uh, these are the things you can uh, get to know about with a lot of practice so is oet better or ielts because oet is much expensive than ielts okay so answer to this question is that i know oet is three times expensive than ielts but the thing is oet is much doable exam than ielts so ma'am please tell about reading sub test okay dr binish we have to conduct an other webinar on reading as well because today we are uh, discussing about writing so i think it is not appropriate here to uh, discuss the things about reading sub test ma'am is cutting any word in written writing has any effect yes it would but the better thing is to avoid these kind of things uh ma'am can we get only writing subscription uh yes i think ramesh has replied her and ramesh if she wants to get subscription then can please contact her when is mock ma'am uh it's totally up to you when you want to take uh we just see the feasibility of the student whenever you are free to take you can easily book yourself ma'am which paragraph we have to mention all visit it is an other important point i think uh Uh, who has asked like she's Alia Rashid. Uh, Alia, I think you are our course student, and I am very surprised. Like, why are you asking this question? So anyhow, uh, mention all visit. We don't have to mention all visit. We have to check whether which visits are important to mention. Please tell me about OET. Uh, which countries accept OET? Uh, Doctor Heather, you have to check for the country to which you are applying whether uh. it is acceptable or not it's very easy so zain is saying difference of mr miss and mrs it is a very common and general question uh, you can easily uh, check your case notes like your patient is mr miss and mrs whatever he or she is so these are some of the queries and uh, okay so ramesh has shared the uh, number as well and ramesh please share our uh, free group link here so that uh, uh, those students who are not a part of it can become a part of it and thank you so much all of you still if there is any query you can please ask me so that after that i may wind up the session okay now you can see that she has also also shared the group link and uh, how much is your fee for oet uh, zan you can contact ramesh for this because these are the things uh, for the coordination department and thank you so much all of you for your presence and uh, i would be grateful if you all could um, mention and write your reviews in our free group so thank you all of you uh, for your presence and don't forget to write reviews thank you so much good luck allah hafiz thank you ma'am thank you allah hafiz